Hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Now today we move along a little bit further and start applying some scenery in terms of foliage and other elements to the scenic side of the fiddle yard and also the hill area where the church is. We'll see how it goes with this particular episode and see sort of how far I get. I don't want this episode to turn into a great big huge marathon so it may be split into two parts. So I think without further ado let's just get into it. So there's a number of phases to go through with the scenic foliage side of things and I usually start with a sort of base level of scatters then slowly build it up to things like static grass and clump foliage and that kind of thing so this is just the first phase where we just put down some fine scatter as a foundation for this embankment so this is the same process i'll use for the hillside as well in certain areas obviously so what we've got here we've got our trusty old wood glue which suffices quite well for these materials. We've got here, this is a Woodland Scenics blended turf, which is an earth blend. So it's quite muted and got quite sort of brown, almost autumn -y type tones in it. So I find this is actually really good for that sort of base level. We have here a knock product which is just simply a scatter material it's sort of kind of like like as if it would be leaves and things like that this would probably be used a little bit more sparingly and then we've just simply got sieved dirt from the garden so that also sort of adds to this sort of base foundation so they're all quite muted colors really in a lot of ways so we'll get this going and then of course once that's all dry then we can actually start to build up the next layer. So I've just gone over past that join so that we can sort of match up as we go and then carry on and of course I'm not doing huge chunks of it in one go otherwise by the time we get to some areas the glue would have dried or started setting. Now I'm going to start with just the simple earthy colours and I'm actually working putting this in it down at the bottom end because I'm kind of thinking on the on the slopes like as the slope gets steeper there might be more exposure of the terrain so possibly le maybe slightly less vegetation down in this end so that's that one then i think it'll be a combination between this scatter and the knock scatter in terms of just sort of working in i kind of want a sort of a patchy look to the rest of it so it's sort of not all one color and I probably might go pretty light on this stuff because it is quite sort of chunky this particular material great thing of course having these sections removable at this point is of course you can manipulate them nicely to get the static to sit without it falling down the hillside and that is the correction not static this is not static grass
Okay, so that's all got those blended scatters on here and now we're just going to let that dry off and then of course once that's dry then I basically blast that with a clear coat of spray just to essentially fix everything into place and I may just use hairspray uh, to do that it's sort of cheap and cheerful and once I've shaken off all this extra scatter and we've got it all here I usually actually keep this I know it's all kind of mixed together now but it does still actually make for a reasonably good sort of foundation type scatters even when it is all just sort of blended together so the base layer of scenic material is now dry and I've just masked off the retaining walls because there will be a selection of adhesives used so we're going to be using of course some PVA at various points we will also be spraying some adhesive as well so I don't really sort of want to get that all over the retaining walls so the process that I'm sort of going to use in this situation and it's kind of interesting I have shown a video previously with some scenic build up around the curved fire duct which there's a link up in the top corner for that and essentially I'm using very similar materials but I'm sort of maybe taking a slightly different approach maybe in some areas and I'd have to say that really one set of rules for applying scenery in one area of the layout may not necessarily apply for another area so it's almost like really in some respects you kind of have to go with what the terrain is kind of telling you so that you can sort of understand where scenic materials might be what kind of materials they might be are we talking overgrowth brambles dried dead grass and all that kind of nonsense so that's essentially the sort of method that I'm thinking so initially what I'm doing is going to be applying this material here now this is I'll just show you a close-up of it it's got a couple of names which I haven't mentioned in, in that previous video and it, this is actually merino roving yarn this is the stuff that I bought anyway and it's as cheap as chips but I think felting wool is another name as well so I find this incredibly versatile and of course you can get it in various different colors so this is sort of a mid brown there's a dark brown you can get diff different shades of green and all of that kind of thing and you can tease it and pull it apart and it really does actually sort of kind of look like brambles and over overgrowth so I'm going to start with this because what I want to do is get down those kind of like more bulky components of the foliage before I sort of get into anything like static grass and that kind of thing because I'm not going to go over everything it's going to look kind of a little bit patchy and more sort of random rather than trying to get some kind of uniform look so in terms of brambles overgrowth and all of that kind of thing you know potentially ivy all of that kind of wild kind of stuff that grows where would that accumulate where would it would most likely sit and I'm kind of thinking it's going to be down the bottom here it's particularly above the retaining wall you're going to get quite a sort of a cluster of this type of material it's probably going to come up around this part where of course we've got a retaining wall here and then I want to use it here because this stuff is great for disguising joins in sections on your layout so you know some some material that's going to run up here and then also considering the fact that on this side we've got the engine shed I'd, I'm kind of expecting that this would be quite unmaintained and overgrown as well so that we may actually have some layers and maybe it sort of bleeds up and over the edge so this material here basically I just use the PVA glue to glue this stuff down and it can be quite messy and quite tricky to try and get it down so what I also actually use is some bamboo meat skewers so that I can actually kind of just prod and poke it into place and once that's done we then move on to some scatter that will actually go over the top of this and that is what really sort of brings it out and makes it look more like as if it's actually a plant of some sort or or overgrowth and for the scatter I'm using this but I'm also actually going to use a bit of the leftover material as well that was from the ground cover material so might use a bit of that and this material here which is scatter grass forest floor by knock and 
I quite like this. It's it it's a nice sort of tone and it, it's a nice sort of blend of clump and static grass fibres in there as well. And we may also use a bit of this as well, which is coarse turf. But uh, you think well turf, but it actually kind of works quite well as sort of clumps on overgrowth as well. So we'll get this underway and see how it goes. Right, okay, so I've got that fixed down. Now, you're probably looking at this and going, wow, well, that's just like some great big woolly bed that I've glued onto the side of the hill. And yes, it does look like that, but the great thing about this stuff is that essentially what I've done is just the glue is enough to just, once it dries, just to hold the many cl clumps that I've positioned, and that just basically fixes it in place. Once I've done that, then of course we come along with the scissors and give the whole thing a haircut and we can sort of trim it and shape it to how we want it to go so for example up here like it's just looking a little bit too shaggy and things like that so we can just get in here with the scissors and give it a good haircut and then once I've actually done that then I sort of go over the whole thing with a um, spray which essentially fixes it all into place and makes it sort of a little bit more solid and permanent and this stuff here that I'm actually using which I have used in the past and it was in that other video is this matte clear varnish and it is a water-based varnish and it's quite runny so it actually works really well in a spray bottle so I've just popped some in here and it and it dries a matte clear so you don't get any sort of glossiness to it and it really fixes it into place and then of course while I've after I've sprayed that I can sprinkle on some scatter to really basically bring it to life and that's that's the process anyway and it sort of worked reasonably well in the past so that's what's going to continue with this here so this is all now dry and set in place and I've now gone over all of this material and given it a good haircut so it's nicely trimmed and tidied up and shaped a little bit so the next phase is to add scatter and other materials over the top that will basically bring it to life now as I mentioned earlier I'm going to use this knock grass forest scatter it's uh, quite a good blend that one I'm also going to use a bit of this coarse turf scatter I'm not quite sure what brand this is but it is actually very similar to Woodland Scenics dark green 
coarse turf but it isn't actually woodland scenics and I'm also going to add a little bit of this material here which is essentially ground up dried leaves from the garden and just for a few sort of highlights there is this material here which is essentially a orange or yellow sponge that I have cut into little pieces and popped in the coffee grinder so incidentally a few people asked I think in the last video how I grind up the chalk pastels for the weathering powders and this is what I use it's an old second-hand Bosch coffee grinder which I picked up pretty cheap on an online auction so and it works brilliantly so as I mentioned before this is the matte clear paint which I have actually watered down just a little bit because I've opened up a new tin and it seems to be a little bit thicker and I've also added in just a few drops of dishwashing liquid which sort of just helps with the flow a little bit better as well so we'll start by using this and just do a fine mist over this and then start adding the scatters down So essentially what I'm doing is actually just grabbing a, a pinch full of the dark green turf type scatter which is sort of almost like a really fine clump type foliage. That is really essentially the base and I'm sort of dabbing it in there and that sort of actually helps to work its way in between the fibres in, in this wall material and I'm doing exactly where I want it to go rather than sprinkling it down on top because there is a little bit of overspray on the glue and I'm trying not to get this material elsewhere where it doesn't really need to go and essentially why I'm actually spraying this glue beforehand is pushing it in as of course I'm going to go over it afterwards and of course having a bit of glue underneath helps to actually hold it in place now I'm just using a very soft brittle brush just to brush out anything that does actually fall into areas where I don't want it just to clear the area and also dabbing in here too that kind of helps to work it in and then once I've gone over with the first layer then it's a case of going back over this again with another layer of doesn't matter too much really if it goes on this base cover because there is going to be static grass and things like that and the great thing about this matte clear paint uh, varnish or whatever you want to call it it does actually dry clear and more or less matte it's not quite matte and the next layer that we're putting on is a, just a little bit of this which is the knock forest scatter and same process kind of almost dabbing it on with a good pinch full in between my fingers and then the last one is this ground up garden leaves and I'm only just sort of doing this in some very very sort of select areas where I might find maybe slightly more dead foliage and this doesn't really need to go on over another layer of glue because I'm just sort of doing it in certain areas just to give it a bit of variation and we'll just go over with another blast of spray and then last but, but not least is the kitchen sponge so this is possibly just to mimic some wild flowers that may be in amongst all this overgrowth and I'm, I am using this quite sparingly I could have actually used some sort of orange or bright orange scatters that you can buy but I didn't actually have any and 
I just sort of scoured around to try and find something that might look similar. Now what I actually do with these sort of bright kind of yellow highlights actually is I do actually dull them down a little bit and I just use a, a very light sprinkling of some of the dirt from the garden so I just put some on the end of a brush and just very sort of carefully dash that over the top and it just sort of kind of takes the edge off the flowers so they just don't look so intensely bright so we'll leave that now to dry and I had prepared one earlier so we can have a look to see how the finished article looks so that is the other section of this hill here this is kind of dry now and that's how it's kind of looking so the next phase of course will be going over all these areas now so there's going to be a mixture of different lengths of static grass different color tones and I'm not going to completely cover this with static grass I do actually want to see some of this base material showing through in places as well so it's sort of possibly longer grasses down here and around these edges and maybe shorter grasses through the middle so that will be the next step so the next step we'll do in another video because this is actually starting to get a little bit long and there is quite a bit involved too actually in the static grass side of things as well so that will actually make quite another good episode in itself so in terms of what I've completed so far it certainly is starting to take shape and I think the beauty about this teased wall type material is that you can really sort of manipulate it to quite a large extent and of course I have actually seen other people use this material in videos on YouTube and of course it can also be used quite nicely with tree armatures and things like that as well so you can really sort of pull it apart and wrap it around branches of trees and then of course add scatter over the top of it so there's a few little bits and pieces to continue on with one of the aspects to this area of course is the embankments by the fiddle yard and the engine shed of course will actually be anchored into place on the actual baseboard so once that is actually completed then I'll actually continue on and do some further foliage and overgrown brambles and things like that that will actually blend into the baseboard and of course create that seamless effect of course one of the areas I haven't treated yet is the churchyard itself now I sort of want to look at that completely differently because to a degree obviously the churchyard will be a little bit a little bit more well manicured even though there still might be areas of overgrowth particularly where I establish a small cemetery area so we'll leave it there for this particular episode and of course in the next episode we'll actually get into some of the static grass application and that in itself will be a relatively comprehensive video one of the aspects that I need to look at with the static grass is some may recall from a previous video I purchased a precision static grass applicator which the intention was that that would be good for getting into some really awkward areas in the cutting scene that I developed now it sort of worked to a degree but you had to be really quite fussy about what kind of grass you put in there and of course how much grass you put in the applicator so part of the next video of course is actually looking at how potentially I can actually improve that applicator so the applicator in question is it's the Pico applicator which is this device here and the problem with it really is there's nothing there aren't any issues in terms of its power and its strength it's just simply the reservoir where the static grass is put is really really small and what actually happens is the grass in here kind of clumps up into balls rather than actually trying to get through the mesh in the bottom so in the next video I'm going to look at 
how I can improve this or whether this may be another attachment that I can kind of fashion together myself. So along with this applicator is also my homemade static grass applicator which of course is from a electric fly swat and of course these are pretty prevalent across YouTube <laughs> and many people have made these and it actually works really well and it's certainly far cheaper than going out and buying a professional static grass applicator. So until the next episode please do take care everyone and look after yourselves and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.